Good morning, flute players, or whatever time of day you're consuming this. Um, this is how we're going to work over the next little bit. I'm going to talk to you, or I will have talked to you about this on Friday, um, which for me is a day in the future, but for you is probably last week. Uh, I'll explain this in that conversation so you know what's happening. We're going to be rehearsing new music. This opportunity gives me a chance to really work one-on-one -on -one with each instrument group and each part group. Uh, as we put together this new repertoire. Uh, so, we are going to be playing Air and Dance by Bruce Pearson. It's a piece with a whole bunch of different elements, and being able to create these individual videos while time-consuming is going to allow me to help you more on learning how to practice new repertoire, especially when everyone isn't playing the same melody. So, first off, you gotta warm up. You gotta put some air into the tube. So, first, tune. Your tuner and your metronome are going to be your two most important things. On a laptop, on a tablet, you can always have these. I have an app here called Fourscore, which is for my music, F-O-R-S-C-O-R-E. You do not need this app. You can just download it, any tuner. But I have a little tuner in here that I can pull up and play my concert B-flat. And make sure that I am pretty close to being in the middle there. And I was, which is great. So, once you are tuned up, you need to get going on some long tones to get some air going, to get your instrument warmed up, to get your face warmed up. And for that, I have a metronome app. I suggest you get the same. In fact, I do more than suggest. I require you to get a metronome app. They're free. They're also, uh, if you just Google the word metronome, it comes up. You should know this because you've been doing Google assignments with a metronome. Wink. Um, this is the one I use. It is just called metronome. We are going to use it to play long tones on our B-flat major scale. Now, let me grab my television remote to make sure you can hear the metronome. What we are going to do is play eight counts of each note, so eight beats of B-flat rest for eight beats, eight beats of C, rest for eight beats, then D, E flat, F, G, A, B flat, that's the end of our scale. We're only going up this time, so we can save time on the video, but I recommend you do it both up and down. So, starting the metronome, 80 beats per minute, deep breaths, one, two, ready, So that's just it on the way up. For me, it starts to be difficult around G, right? That high G, the sixth note. Um, that's because it requires that different amount of air where you might accidentally hit the lower note. You might accidentally hit. All you need to do is angle your air slightly further down and make it faster. I like to think about cold air, cold and fast air when I do this. Warm and slow air makes the low notes happen. Fast and cold air makes the high notes happen. So warm air, and then cold air. I even accidentally hit the partial above that. It's too high. That's the 
same for the last three notes, G, A, and B flat. Now, sustaining those notes is going to be a little harder. If you don't sustain it for eight beats this week, it's okay. That's just something you're working on getting at the end of this month. Now, back to our piece. I assigned you to play the first 33 measures of this piece. And your reaction might be, oh no, 32 measures. But a lot of it is rest. It is unlike the other pieces we've been playing because other instruments have solo features while you do not. So, first thing to do is look at this piece. Things you can automatically see. We are in A flat, or we have an A flat. We are in the key of E flat, my apologies. E flat has three flats. So that is your B flat and your E flat that you normally play, and then also your A flat. So go ahead and play an A right now. Right, that's your A. Now what you're gonna do to play an A flat is take your A, which is your thumb, first, and second finger, and you are going to add your third finger and your pinky on your left hand, in this middle key right here. And it is going to sound like... See how those are a half step apart? Again, A, and A flat. For the lower octave, warm air, same fingerings. A, A flat. So, anytime you see an A, can't find one with my eyes here. Oh, there we go. Anytime you see an A, it is an A flat. And it tells you that over here in the key signature, right? You have this sheet music in front of you. I have sent the PDFs. All you need to do is find your part. Um, and lastly, I will have assigned you to first flute and second flute. They are different parts. For the first 33 measures, they are the exact same. So I will not be making two videos for flute one and flute two. Okay, see this is flute one and flute two. Exact same for the first little bit. Now, let me go back to flute one. Starts on your E flat. Right, that's your starting pitch right here at measure 11. Now, it's at a medium tempo. So about 80 beats per minute is what I, I interpret on Dante to be 80 beats per minute. I'm going to count myself off, and I'm going to play until measure 19. Then we're going to talk about shape. One, two, ready. First thing you're going to notice, takes a lot of air. These phrase markings, they are slurs, but not complete slurs. Now what I did, I played it the way I did on purpose. I tongued most notes here. I wanted them to be tongued, slightly. I don't want them staccato. I don't want them to sound like... And I do not want them to sound completely slurred like I played this section. That would sound like no tongue. Because you're gonna one, run out of air, and two, if you don't move your fingers at exactly the right time, bad notes are gonna happen in between. So I want it slightly tongued, that way you'll save more air, and also the notes will be distinct. up the F, that's what I would like. Now, other things you'll notice. Some of these phrases will take more than one breath. I am bigger than you. I have bigger lungs than you. I can manage this mostly in one breath. If you need to take a breath, you need to decide where it will be least offensive. Now, the obvious place is in between the phrase markings, but if you need to take a breath during a phrase marking, it's okay while you rehearse. We'll work on air capacity. The first breath mark is at measure 19. That does not mean the first time you breathe in this place is measure 19. 
that, that, would, that would not happen. So what I'm going to do is play from measure 11 all the way to measure 28. You can play along with me. This is where in video form you can pause me, rewind, slow me down, speed me up. Not many people are going to want to speed me up, talk fast. Um, but you can't do that in class. So I am going to play from 11 to 33, or 11 to 28, and 33 is just a sustained note, you can tell. I am going to be observing the phrase markings, the dynamic markings, and the breath marks. There's another breath mark I didn't see. Um, I'm going to play it as well as I can. I am also sight reading here. This is a new piece to me. And as I have said many times in class, flute is not my principal instrument. But let's do it. One, two, ready, go. sound like. I did mess up measure 17. I will play that isolated right now. It should sound like or with proper articulation. Right? So that is what I would like you to work on this week. Warm up tune. Make sure you're sitting with proper posture. I forgot to mention that, but I know nobody's watching you and nobody can call you out at home right now. So when you sit like this, yeah, don't play well. Those backs should be straight. Your flute should be completely parallel to the ground. If you're looking like this or you're looking like this, you're making bad sounds. So tune, proper posture. Do your warm up with long tones, both up and down. We only did it up in this video, but do it both directions. And then learn the first 33 measures of this piece. I will play this piece right now on Spotify and play along with it, because I can. <laughs> Eventually, this is what I would like you to do. If you're confident enough to do this um, during your practice this week, that would be lovely. I will also post a link to this on the communicator. Ready? Two, two, three, four. Measure three.
then the piece goes on to the faster section. We're working on the chorale slower section this week. We will get to that next week. If you'd like to read ahead, be my guest. It's lovely. Uh, but that's all for this week. And all this week's playing lesson, at least. I will see you on the Zoom on Friday. Uh, if you do have any questions, email me, gchat me during the school day. I will be available for you. Um, other than that, have a lovely day.